How do I know my calling? The video says, uh, if I feel like a woman, I am a woman. If I feel like a man, I am a man. You can turn your testing into testimony. You can turn your darkness into light. With God, you can. Somebody say amen. How do I know my calling? Young people, older people here still looking for your calling one. I give you eight points. Fast, fast one, huh? Ready? Here we go. Lumber one. Your birth. Your birth itself. You are a man. Come on. You are a woman. Oh, I want to shake my hand. Wow. See, woman shake hand. Men high five. See, see, see the difference already? Yeah, that's why the devil wants to mess it up. Do you know that today, people are still struggling with, no, no, I want to be what I want to be. Have you seen the, the latest video? The video says, uh, if I feel like a woman, I am a woman. If I feel like a man, I am a man. Hello, please don't go with feelings. Remember the song of feelings, chicha on the ceiling, you know? Don't, don't. No, be, just because you were born a man, that's your call. And you were born a woman, that's your call. And the devil wants to mess that one up also. Actually, that's the simplest thing already. The simplest thing uh, is that you were born a man, you were born a woman, but the devil wants to mess it up. I know, it would be very unpopular when I preach this in America, be very unpopular when I preach this in UK, very unpopular when I preach this in Australia, okay? These are the three leading countries uh, that uh, frowns upon you talking about gender identity. But I tell you what, uh, we were made in God's image and that was the image we were made in and because I'm a man, then I do things as a man. I will never be able to be pregnant, I tell you this. Some of you are laughing at me. Some of you don't believe. No, I will never be able to be pregnant. And, uh, and, and, and therefore not understand uh, what pregnancy means. Okay? But some of the ladies, while they go through pregnancy and they go through a hard time being pregnant and giving birth, there are some things that men go through that women are actually not meant to go through. And that's why men are supposed to lead, ma. See, just by knowing that you're a man or woman, uh, you already know what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to lead. And leadership uh, is not easy, guys. It's not easy because when you make a decision, the, 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 the weight of the decision is on your shoulders. On the shoulder of a man. And so you can make even a wrong decision and you can cause your whole family to suffer. I just spoke to a man like this um, a couple of days ago. Okay? Top lawyer, made a lot of money, had seven cars, bungalows, and uh, even a title in front of his name, and he lost everything. Lost everything. And then he asked me, Pastor, you, can you lead me back to Christ? He was a Christian, and then he went into another religion, and uh, he made money because, you know, sometimes other religions sometimes may not be as strict as the Christian religion when it comes to money, bribery. So, the conscience not so deep, lah. conviction not so strong, lah. So you join another so that the, the other religion might not be strong on cannot give bribes. Whereas Christianity is strong on that, you see. So sometimes people shift uh, so that they can do their own thing and make money, alright. Now he's, he's totally gone. Financially gone. Uh, and, 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 and it's sad. It's very sad. Uh, 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 and so I said, is your wife still with you? He said, I thank God that my wife is still with me although I caused so much trouble to my family. And my two sons are already in college. But he says that he was in tears. I have caused so much sorrow to my family. And yet my wife has not left me. I thank God. The wife is a free thinker, not even a Christian. You're with me, right? The brunt, I could see uh, the weight on his shoulder. He's crying, a grown man. Okay, a dato. Crying. Because of his decisions. And yet, and yet men... If you know you're a man, you're supposed to take that up and be very careful with your decisions so that you will only bring blessing and peace to your home. Amen? Number two, experiences. How do I know I'm called? Well, number one is birth. As simple as that. You're a man, lead. No? Number two, experiences. Upbringing, your response. Okay. So I was brought up, I told you many times uh, my, my own family story. 
uh, my mother had to leave my family when I was one year old. My father and mother divorced. I told you all that story, so I won't go on further. I know the time is also ticking away. And I've come to learn not to reject my upbringing. I've come to learn not to be so sad about the fact that my mother left me. Uh, but to come to a place whereby, okay God, you allowed this to happen to me and so I'm going to use it right now to be part of my calling. And the reason, you know, I mean guys, you know my story, right? My sister committed suicide before she turned 21. Now I can stand here and be sad about it, cry about it and you know, woe is me or I can take all my experiences, my upbringing and say I'm going to use it for the glory of God. This is very important. And because of my sister dying at such a young age uh, through taking her life, we have now started Lynette's. And Lynette's now is doing wonderful things in schools, telling people about, you know, suicide prevention. You can turn your sorrow into joy. You can turn your testing into testimony. You can turn your darkness into light. With God, you can. Somebody say amen. I was very poor. And so I understand people in poverty and help them, your experiences. So please, everyone here, don't reject any of your experiences. Don't say, because of that, I am going to be, you know, something else that God never called me to be. Say, Lord, whatever pain, I'm going to turn it into prosperity. Amen. Whatever pain, I'm going to turn it into healing. Number three, roles. Positions. So just because you're now a leader, then that's your calling. If you are a manager, that's your calling. If you are a supervisor, that's your calling. God has given you that gift. So if you go like, oh, I don't know, I like, know, I just by accident became a manager, then you will never be a good manager because it's by accident, you think. But if God gave you that position, then, then, then understand, I have a call as a manager to be a good manager to my the, the people under me. You, you with me? That's why when Christians understand calling uh, and understand that they were not just in this position by chance, they will start to take it as a ministry to the Lord. Your position. Maybe your, your position as a husband. Maybe your position as a wife. You know, I had uh, written on my, on my board, my whiteboard in my office. Uh, I take the, take the whiteboard when I shifted office, but for at least about seven years, you know, I, I wrote, I wrote, no, I wrote down. Uh, uh, it, it, I think there were eight or nine things I said. Uh, I hope that I have been faithful as a son. And I think about it. Was I there for my dad? Was I there for my mom? Was I there for my parents-in-law? Okay, hopefully I can. Okay, faithful as a son. That's my position, son. So I want to be faithful. Have I been faithful as a Christian leader in FGA? Yes or no? Whenever I was there to serve and how long I was there, I would, then I put the number three. Am I faithful as a husband? Uh, do I remember birthdays? Do I remember anniversaries? You see, because you realize as you write down the list, uh, you have time for everything right, that God has called you to be. You can't just say, oh, just because I'm a husband now, I have no time for my mother. And that now because I, you know, I'm a son now, I have no time. You can't, you, life, I, I think that if God gave you the position, He will give you time to do well in that position. And so I, I remember, you know, because before I can write the 10th thing, which does not exist yet, I had to, in my heart, be confident that I've been faithful in all the other things God has given me. Because why should he then give you the next thing, which is probably the next biggest thing in your life when you have not been faithful in all the other things? <laughs> not been faithful as a son, not been faithful as a daughter, not been faithful as a wife, not been faithful as you know, a, a boss. You know, you know, I, 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 I'm a, right now, I'm an employer of 77 staff. Uh, I, I, and and, and I, I have to also say, am I faithful as an employer? But, I know that my life has not done. The best is still ahead of us. And so number 10, I have nothing there. God will show it to me. But again, I want to say, you've got to be faithful with everything else He's given you and then believe that God will give you the next big thing. Number four, giftings, talents. 
God has given you a gift and a talent. Be faithful to that. What is a gift? A gift is basically something that you don't need extra uh, 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 um, effort to do. If you have a gift as a singer, you take the microphone and you start singing already, wow. you know, so easy, so effortless. Someone else who doesn't have a gift of singing, well, I have to practice hard, harder, la, have to try harder. La. It's okay. Sometimes God can also call you to be faithful to do something that you don't have a natural gift. Never mind. But those of you who have a natural gift and you have a gift, some of you cooking, right? What are you using that gift for? Why well, the talents are very important. How many of you remember the next slide says this, right? Matthew 25, 40 to 30. Five talents, two talents, one talent. The one talent went and buried it. All right, five and two. So God is saying to you, if I've given you the talent, use it. Because if you don't use it, you're burying it. If you have five talents and you only use three, you're burying two and you're worse than the guy with one talent. Number five, passion. What gets you up in the morning? Why are you passionate about sports? Other people around you not passionate. You, because you were given that passion. Why are you passionate about music? Someone else is not. Why are you passionate about preaching? Others are not. Why are you passionate about leading? Others are not. You know, uh, there, there are certain passions that God gives us that marks or defines our call. And you must not reject that passion. Some of you have passion for the poor. Others may not have. And you cannot try to rub off your passion on others. If they catch it, they catch it. If they don't, they don't. But some people like, like for example, like fathers get into trouble sometimes because they want their son to be the same as them. So the father's a lawyer, want the son to be a lawyer, and the father trying to rub off his passion on the son. You can't do that. God will give your son another passion or maybe the same. But it has to be his passion because I tell you what, if you do anything out of passion, you will succeed. I can tell you right now, maybe not always succeed with money, but you will succeed. Every Sunday when I preach here, I hope that when you see me preach here, you know there's passion. Because even though you are not sweating, I am. And this aircon is quite cold already, you know. But I, 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 I take every message uh, with all my heart and, and people say, why pastor, it's so cold and you still sweat. Because there's some passion that's going on inside me that tells you I will give my best to every message I preach. Because this is my call. Everybody see okay? And I know that people are blessed when I speak uh, and, and, and I pray. I know some people are blessed a little bit, some people are blessed a lot, but praise God. Come on, continue in your passion. Okay? Some people like to say, oh, but you know, uh, I tell you, uh, I've been doing this for 20 years. Don't say that. Don't limit your time with, 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 with time. Passion doesn't have to be limited with time. Oh, but you know, uh, I've been preaching uh, like this uh, for 20 years, so I think I deserve a break. Right? But if it's a passion that God has given you, please continue. Don't let the devil lie to you. Oh, you know, I've been doing this for a long time. I think I, I, uh, I want to change that. Uh, uh, Chin Wan Keng, you know, they say in France. Uh, 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 and uh, uh, I know some of you are laughing because it's not France. Uh, but, um, but, you know, I want to... Uh, see, we always get into trouble because we suddenly look at it as our own self. We want a change of environment. We want a change of perspective. We want a change of uh, church. We want a change of curtains. We want a change of, uh, you know, whatever, uh, 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 beautification. Uh, and, and therefore, you make a decision to step out of your calling and you leave your passion. I'm going to tell you right now, don't leave your passion. Number six, your surroundings. This one I learned from who, you know? Uh, from an uh, American pastor by the name of Bill Wilson. Bill Wilson has the biggest children's church in the world. Right now, it stands at 120,000 children. Okay. Uh, all around the world, I think there's 20,000 children in Philippines and there's, uh, you know, 40,000 children in America or whatever. He's well known, 77 years old, I think now, uh, and still in children's ministry, still driving the bus. Bill Wilson spoke in our church uh, uh, some years ago uh, and he's still collecting money to help children. You know what he said? I know my call. And that's why until today, I still serve children. There's no retirement. This is my passion. This is my gifting. I'm, this is my calling. But you know what he said? He said this. It's not, it's not difficult to know my calling when I hear a child cry by the lane. 
He says, even though I want to do something else, as soon as I walk by the lane and I hear a child cry for food, for shelter, for love, I hear my calling. I love that. Because sometimes we take it too spiritually, you know. God, where is my calling? God, please drop it in a, in a lightning. Thunder. And God says, you want me to strike you as well? No, no, no just strike the lightning by the side. I just want, I just want a confirmation. I just want a confirmation. Um, I want a confirmation. Please show me my calling. Ah, someone's crying by himself. Ah, I'm hungry. I'm thirsty. You keep quiet first. Ah. Lord, I'm just asking. I'm just asking, please. Uh, someone fell down, hurt themselves, broke their leg. Oh, please, someone help me. Shh. That's the same story, right, about the Good Samaritan. Rushing to church or rushing to church. So a man almost dead. I go to church first, I'll see you later. Rush to church, rush to church. Rush to what you think your calling is. And your calling is on the street there calling for you. You know, and that's why I know when I, when I work with Pastor Daniel and the people working with the young people, uh, I know your passion. I, I know sometimes when you are in tears, when you're thinking about a young person, and you say, Pastor, I can hear their cry. Uh, and, and, and I love uh, leaders like that because they know their calling. And their calling is not one of those, oh, let me wait. Should I do a camp? Should I, should I let people, yeah, these young people stay in my house? Should I feed them? Should I drive them? No, you, you hear from their voice. And every time you hear a young person say something, you feel called. It's, it, it, other people here are maybe women ministry. Some people here are senior citizens. So I, I don't know. But let me draw to a close. Supernatural encounters, number seven. What are these? Well, there are some days you will get an angel to come in your room. Angel. Daniel. Ah! Who are you? Who are you? I am Angel Kenner. New... New edition. Gabriel and Michael were busy. So here I am. Oh, you're so tall. Yes, I'm 10 foot 4. So beware your wings. Didn't bring today. <laughs> Left it at home. Because your apartment too small for my wings. Your apartment, especially your apartment, Joe. Too small for my wings. Daniel, you shall. Okay. Wow. Supernatural encounters, we don't discount it. It happens. But why I put it number 7, huh? Because, because, uh, just get on with your number one to, you know, right? And that, Because some of you are still waiting for that angelic visitation. But can I say this? It happens. It does happen. People will tell me uh, how I knew that God wanted me to do AYA X Church. It was really by vision. Dream. A voice. I heard a voice speaking to me in the dark of night. Or maybe, maybe actual call. Actual call. You know? The phone ring. Calling. Hello? Daniel? Come now, quickly. No one to open the door in the legacy. Okay. Last one. Word of God. Word of God. Okay. Now this is not put there last because it's last. Huh? It should actually be put first. But um, if all fails, if all fails, I want you to lift up your Bible and read it. Because in that are commandments. And in that are commission. The Lord says, go into all the world and preach the gospel, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And lo, I will be with you until the end of the age. Okay? Uh, the Bible, the Bible, what does the Bible say? What does the Bible say to us? Very, very important. The Bible tells husband, husbands how to love their wives. The, tell, the Bible tells wives how to submit to their husbands. The Bible tells children how to honour their parents. The Bible tells parents how to, you know, not... What's the word for it? There's a, there's a, there's a word, right, in the Bible. Uh, uh, don't aggravate your children. Don't push them so hard that they break. The Bible tells even bosses how to be good employers, doesn't it? Bosses! Be kind to your, to your staff. The, the Bible teaches staff how to be honouring to their bosses. When you serve your masters, your earthly masters, make it like you're serving your heavenly master. Hello everyone. Thank you so much for watching. If you've been blessed by this video, 
please share this with a friend and bless them too. Do like this video and subscribe to this channel for more content like this. Wishing you all good health and God's grace and favour to be upon all of you. God bless you. See you next time.